Hi, hey, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have read some more Greek mythology reimagining types of books. So, I got three books, two authors, coincidentally. So, the first one is Atalanta. That sounds very weird. Atalanta? I don't know how to say it, like, it doesn't sound weird. Atlanta, Atalanta. Something. Uh, it is the latest book by Jennifer Saint, unless she's happened to write and publish a book since this came out this year. I mean, it's possible. What do I know? <laughs> I'm gonna put it will it stand there? Can we see it properly? Possibly. So Atalanta. That was probably correct. I don't know. I make stuff up, okay. So Atalanta is a reimagining of the Greek myth of Atalanta funnily enough, the girl who was raised by bears, who then became the only woman amongst the world's most famous band of heroes, the Argonauts. That was probably a weird pronunciation as well. These Greek stuff, it's hard to say, okay? So this is a myth that I've not heard a whole lot about. It's one where I've heard the name, like in passing, but that's about it. This book though, it gave so much. Atalanta goes from living peacefully with the nymphs in uh, Artemis's forest. Sure, she moves away from home, as in she finds her own cave and like sets up shop. But she's happy there, she's happy in that forest. She's not really longing for life outside of everything. But then Artemis like the gods do, sends her on a quest to become the only female aboard the Argo. So she goes from not having been around a lot of humans, let alone having met many men, or like she's met one man as far as I know, and then she's going to a boat that's just full of dudes. It's like Artemis is setting her up to fail. So Atalanta, she changes. She changes a lot from like the first page. I mean, she's growing up, but she changes as soon as she goes away from the forest. She like sets out in the world. She changes a lot. Not just like that she learns a lot of new skills and things and whatnot, but her mood, her whole personality changes. Um, it's very subtle though, so it's not like from one day to the, to the next and it's like a completely different person. You can tell how she's evolving, but maybe not for the better because she's kind of mean. So this book was so well written, like so good. It's a life told. Uh, it's high, highly recommended. Hi. So recommended. What am I saying? I highly rate this book. If you like Greek myths, retellings, reimaginings, this is a good one. It's also very easily, easily, it's very, also very easy to read, so it's perfect. As a side note, and maybe a spoiler, so if you want to skip this part, do it. Um, but before Atalanta sets out, Artemis tells her that the seer has foretold that as soon as Art Art Artemis, as soon as Atalanta gets married, she's gonna lose herself. Like it will be her doom. And the way, like the way it, that whole thing ends up, it's so beautiful. It's it's like it's beautiful. <laughs> Let's just say that. There is one tiny little bit like the 
parts leading up to the end of the book that part felt a bit rushed um maybe could have done with a little bit longer but at the same time uh we don't want a lot of that we're kind of done with the whole thing by then and it's just like this is the end this is just the part leading up to the end so mm, i mean take that as you will all right the next book also one i'm not sure how to pronounce but i'm gonna try it anyway so it's clitimus clit clit oh i failed already Clitin clitinestra clitinestra Clytemnestra. This person <laughs> by Costanza Casati. There's a sticker in the way, okay? I, I, I can't read that whole thing. Ka. Never mind. So. Yeah? Cool. So, Clytemnestra, I can't say the name, I can't say the name, okay, so again, another myth which I've just about heard the name in passing, that's about it. Clytemnestra? Anyway, this, this lady, she is a princess of Sparta, the sister of Helen, um, you know, Helen of Troy, yes? Uh, that comes up later, so it's not that big of a spoil. <laughs> so, it is said that Clytemnestra is the most notorious villainess of the ancient world. This is her story and how she was forged into the queen she later became. So, from very early on, Clytemnestra is fierce and clever. And in the beginning, especially, she's complaining a lot how... Helen is beautiful and she will never have that, but at least she has her brain. I mean, she's not an ugly girl, okay? Let's be honest. So, speeding along, uh, way along, there's loads of things that happens, but um, that would be telling the whole story. So, in short, Agamemnon has come to town. He wants her. So, he plots to have her husband and baby boy murdered to then you know marrying her and taking her back to Mykene while his brother Menelaus marries her sister Helen and stays and later becomes the king of Sparta so flash forward a couple of years and an envoy comes to Sparta from Troy ruh -roh, to make peace make friends I don't know what they're doing but we know what happens. Helen falls madly in love with Paris and runs away with him to Troy <laughs> and ends up starting a war. She is the cause of the whole Trojan War. Agamemnon, who has been waiting for an excuse to go to war, you know, takes this opportunity had son. So he sets off with his brother and a bunch of other dudes to, you know, take Helen back and you possibly kill some people along the way. War. Effectively putting Clytemnestra in charge of Mykene. But not long after he's gone away, he sends word that he wants his wife and his daughter, Virginia? his first daughter, his oldest child, he wants them to come so that he can marry her off to Achilles. Of course that does not happen, instead he sacrifices his daughter for a little gust of wind. These Greeks, dude, these Greeks, so bloody. Clytemnestra effectively goes back home and you know, falls into the depression. We meet up again with her a couple of years later, so we flash forward again. And during her time as, well, queen, sole queen, sole reigning person, she has made Mickney prosper. It's actually become rich, and but she has also been biding her time. Vengeance. 
Suffice it to say, she does get her sweet, sweet revenge in the end, but boy has she been waiting a long time for it. I mean, not that Clytemnestra was sweet like jelly to begin with when she was younger and stuff, but as the year goes by in this story, you can tell how much she's just holding it in. She's just like letting it all fester and grow her. Ooh. I don't want to say she's bitter and vile, but close enough. <laughs> close enough. But also, in a sense, she's such a strong woman. It's like she puts you down before you can put her down. She has power and she knows how to use it. Fun fact though, fun fact side note, Castor and Polydeuces um, that are her brothers, are actually in Atalanta on the Argo as well. So we had a little tiny crossover, not like a big one. It was just a fun fact. Although it did take me a tiny bit to figure it out, I read their names and I was like, I know these names. Where do I know these names from? Well, the book I read before that. <laughs> when you're slow. <laughs> so, let's put this down and let's go back to Jennifer Saint book. This is, I believe it's her second book. So Ar Ariane was the first one, Electra second one and hair. Atalanta is the third one. I do believe that's correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's fine. Um, anyway, I read Electra. So, these books all had kind of have something in common. Not that I was like paying attention to that when I picked up the books, but it happened. So, Electra is Agamemnon and Clytemnestra's daughter. If it's the second daughter, third daughter. It's weird because in, Cly in um, Clytemnestra, it's the third daughter, but in this one, she seems to be the second daughter. So, you know. Anyway, in Electra though, we don't just follow Electra, we also follow Clytemnestra and Cassandra. So Cassandra is Paris's sister from Troy, so we're getting all kinds of points of views here. So there's some differences. As in Electra, Clytemnestra and Helen are twins, but in Clytemnestra, Clytemnestra seems to be the older and then Helen. Um, it's a weird thing. Also, um, in both books, they mention how Zeus seduces Leda, which is their mother. Um, as a swan, she was kind of raped by a swan kind of a deal. And then uh, Helen was born from an egg kind of thing. It's weird. Also, like... And that's, like, mentioned a lot in Electra. Here's the thing, though. So I looked this up. Apparently, a female woman can get impregnated and have twins by two different males. But it's so rare, it's not even worth mentioning. So why it comes up so much in this book is weird. Uh, so when I first read it, I was like, she's not a cat. Because cats are known to have litters with, like, more than one male. It's so weird. It's so weird. Move it on. One thing that, like, comes up a lot in both of them is that, you know, Helen was, like... Helen is so beautiful because she's a spawn of Zeus. <laughs> uh, and the whole, like the way she was born and like all that and I mean everybody's talking about it and I'm like why are they just not shutting these rumors down why do you, these people like Lida is the mother of said person why is she not shooting down these rumors seems weird seems weird also in Electra there is no mention at all of Clytemnestra's first husband and baby and also she's like it's like night and day these two Clytemnestras um 
So in Electra, she's like, yes, I will go with you to Mikini Agamemnon. I love you so, basically. And in like, uh, in Clytemnestra, she's like, yeah, she doesn't like him from the start. She still has loads of kids with him though, so. So let's mention Cassandra for a bit. So Cassandra, meanwhile, wants to become a priestess for Apollo. She wants to have these visions and uh, for some reason or another. I mean, she does get her wishes come true as it were. Not really sure how it was. It was like Apollo appeared before her and then she was like, no, I don't want to have sex with you, Apollo. I reject you. And it was like he gave her a curse, and the curse was the visions. And she ends up not being believed by anyone. She just becomes like a mad woman about town. Because why not? Also, just a side note, for anyone who's read the Percy Jackson books, at least like the first books because I don't remember when the seer becomes someone else anyway so you remember that mummy in the attic isn't her name Cassandra or is that just me putting stuff where stuff isn't it was just a thought it was just a thought please if you know the answer let me know let me know first I'd want to question if the book should be called Electra because we have Clytemnestra, we have Cassandra and we have Electras. We have three women's point of view, not just Electra. So, and as far as I could tell, the points of views are quite evenly divided. But like I said before, I don't exactly know the like original myths of these people, characters. Um, so I don't know where the authors have taken liberties and changed things to like fit their story or whatnot. Um, but whichever's, whatever the answer is, it works for the books. So for their story in their books, it works. Um, I do think I like the Clytemnestra in the Clytemnestra book rather than in Electra though, so there's that. Um, but both Atalanta and Clytemnestra, both those books, Chef's Kiss, yes. Electra, mm, I could have done without it, I'm not gonna lie. It was, it was fun to see a different side of things, especially being like night and day Clytemnestra and stuff, but that's about it. That's about it. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Oh, bye-bye.